Okay, oh my god, all good. Hello everyone, welcome and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. Okay, so we are a little bit over halfway through the year and I thought we could do all the books that I've given five stars to so far in 2024. So far in 2024, I've read 41, 42 books, I think, whatever that says. I've had some incredible books. Do you know what? Some books that I read this year, I love so much and some of these are like my favorite all-time favorite books now so I wanted to tell you all the books I have here's a big stack of all the books that I've given five stars to these are not 4.5 4.75 these are five stars like five stars I think I gave five stars to 10 books this year I'm pretty sure I don't know if I counted right I think it's 10 out of 42 it's a quite a lot it's a good like 20 percent 20% right 20% <laughs> math is not for me I wasn't made for math 20% I think 25% I don't want to talk about it let's start the first book I gave five stars to this year was probably an unpopular opinion it's called Masters of Death by Olivia Blake if you know me you know I love Olivia Blake <laughs> I love that woman so much it's very unique book i've never read anything even similar to this like, it's so unique and different and i love the writing style it was funny at times it was emotional at times i laughed out loud it was very witty there's passion there's i just loved it. it i'm gonna quickly tell you what it is about it's about many different characters completely different lives and completely different creatures one is a vampire one is literally the godson of death the godson of death have you ever heard anything like that it's incredible there's angels archangels there is a ghost there is everything and it's just their love stories there's three different couples and you know they have a problem that they have to solve strongly recommend reading this book i know i think this is either for you or not for you but this was for me next still in january i think this is an unpopular opinion as well i read like everyone else crescent city wow this is huge <laughs> i forgot how big this was what the fuck is it ever that serious yes sarah jimas it is um so this is the third book in the crescent city series and it just came out in at the end of january this year and i loved it i know a lot of people didn't but i think the reason why some people didn't like this book is because the way the, the second one ended, you just had some expectations that you set up for yourself. And then the book didn't meet them because it went a completely different way. So I didn't think it's the book's fault. Do you know what I mean? But I really enjoyed it because I set myself no expectations. I literally gave myself nothing. So I really, really enjoyed it. I think it was much better than the second one. I prefer this one to the second one but i think the first one in crescent city is still my favorite out of that series so yeah i can't really tell you much about the plot because i will spoil her two books before but it's this is an urban fantasy you know zootopia that's it <laughs> it's crazy it has a lot of action it's crazy world building so the first book you're like what the fuck? but i love the relationships i love and i prefer this book because the main girl wasn't in it as much as the other one and we had more of another character that i really really love and she had way more screen time page time and so i was very happy to read it you know about crescent city you know about sergey mas i don't need to tell you about it next magnolia parks into the dark this was the first magnolia books i gave five stars to because i prefer the daisy hates books way more way more like i didn't love the first magnolia parks book I liked the second, but the third was beautiful. It was so sad. It was so sad. I cried so much. I cried so much. This is the fifth book in the Magnolia Parks Universe series. It is like Gossip Girl in London. So rich 20 something year olds, like 23, 24, 25. And there's criminality because the Daisy Hates books are mainly about that. 
there's criminality, there is money, there is relationship, there is betrayal, there is friendship, there is love, there's a lot. And it's very dramatic. And I loved Magnolia as a character much more in this book than I did in the last two because I wasn't a big Magnolia fan, like as a character. I liked her way more in this book. And I just want the next one now. I just want the next Daisy book because that's all I care about. I love Daisy's books. I love Christian and love Julian. <gasps> BJ and Magnolia, they're just meant to be, they're fated to be together. But then there's things that happen in between and they're like childhood friends to lovers. But you know, there's someone else there for both sides. So read this series, you've heard about it. It's incredible. And I really, really enjoyed this book. I cried so much. If you can make me cry, I have to give you five stars because if you, if words on paper made me emotionally so attached and so touched that I had tears coming out of my eyes, I have to give you five stars. Next book is probably my favorite book that I've read this year. It is, I don't even want to, I don't even want to talk about it. It's Babel by Araf Kwan. So this book wrecked me talking about crying this i cried the most too i think it's a literary fiction with a little bit of magic uh, and it talks about this chinese boy that when he was very little he got taken by an english man and brought to england at first in london and then to oxford he got brought to oxford in 18 in the 1830s 1840s and you know talks about colonialism and what happens to him and like how it is to be a Chinese person in white England in the 19th century. He has three friends and yeah, the three friends as well, two girls and another boy, none of them are white men, none of them. So how it feels like to not be a white man, to be a girl, to be a boy of color. So it's very interesting, wrecked me so interesting kind of slow so like if you're looking for a quick little beach read no 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 i can like i think you should read this in autumn don't read it now this is not this is not the time autumn read this is perfect it's dark academia a little bit of magic you know reading this rf guang must have researched so much to write this book and must have known so much. You can tell that she's one of the smartest humans in the world because she has a million PhDs and degrees. And I think everyone should read this book at least once. Would I reread it? No, I suffered enough. On a more lighthearted note, <laughs> Reckless by Elsie Silva. Oh my God, ow. Oh. See, this is the thing about wearing rings. Oh. I love this book, it was of course, there were five stars, so of course I loved it. But um, it was so cute and so good and so well written. If you don't know, this is part of the Chestnut... There's a lot of series, I just realized. This is part of the Chestnut Spring series. It's the fourth book out of five. And I read it second though, because they are interconnected standalones. So really, you can read them. You can just read one. You can read them in different order. It doesn't really matter. I read one and then four and then two and then three. <laughs> I'm going to tell you the tropes in this and you'll be like, yeah, I don't want to read it. Trust me, okay? You got to trust me. I so it's a pregnancy trope. <laughs> I know, I know. Just you wait, okay? It's a cowboy romance. Theo Silva. The man that you are, Theo. The man that you are. He's probably like the best male main character in a rom-com I've ever read. Is that what I said? He's perfect and I love her. She is the embodiment of Nesta. She's winter and she's summer. Like the, the main girl in the first book is summer and she's summer's sister. Yeah, she's called winter. I don't want, let's not talk about that. But she is, she is a cold ass bitch. Like she's, her, her name suits her so much because she is colder, she's kind of mean, and I love her so much. She's literally Nesta. She's Nesta. She's a doctor, so she's smart, and he is a cowboy. And yeah, they have a one-night stand, and then she gets pregnant. It is so good. I know pregnancy tropes never, no one ever likes that. Trust me. I feel like there's a couple of books that can do pregnancy tropes. 
very well. Like the Goal by L. Kennedy and Reckless by Elsie Silver. It's so good. I think I just liked both characters so much. I literally loved this. Loved the everything. There was a lot of banter, a lot of teasing. I think this is one of the best rom-coms I've ever read. Not to be dramatic. Next book, I don't have the physical copy. It's Headstrong Like Us. I think this is the sixth book in the Like Us series. There's a lot of series, once again, can't really tell you much about it. But if you've read the Addicted slash Colorway Sister series, this is the series about their kids. And I pro you probably heard me talk about it way too many times. I don't need to talk about it anymore. But it's so good because you're in the same universe. It's the same writer as Kristen Becker Ricci. And you get to have the core six of the first series that everyone loves in this, but like on a different light because they're parents. These are very famous kids, very famous young people. They're in, all in their 20s, at least for now, the main characters. And then they have bodyguards, obviously, because they're billionaires. So they're famous and billionaires. Their parents were very famous. It's like the future, like Kardashians, whatever, like the kids in 20 years, they'll be very famous, even though they've done nothing. Do you know what I mean? They just nap babies. And um, they all have bodyguards and some of them end up having relationship with their bodyguards so they're just romance books but they're like life books because you get to like see them grow up and become who they are and this was definitely my favorite so far it talks about Maxima and Faro and it's like their last book of the two of them I think there's four books from their point of view and this was the last one and it was so good it was my favorite it was literally perfect I enjoyed every second it was dramatic it was they have, I think, out of all the couples I've ever read, the best banter. They literally tease each other and make fun of each other all the time. And they didn't lose that after they got together. You know when enemies to lovers and then they get together and it's boring? No, they didn't. So strongly recommend the Like a series, especially if you read The Addicted slash Calloway Sisters, because they are so good and they're just so quick to read. I literally read these books in like three days and they are on Kindle Unlimited. So next book, this is I'm Late to the Party. I'm Late to the Party, you've all read this four years ago, okay? Crooked Kingdom by Leigh Bardugo. <laughs> this is a YA fantasy duology. It's the Six of Crows duology. I really enjoyed Six of Crows, but I didn't give it five stars. Crooked Kingdom was five stars to me. It's literally a found family. I think the found family of found families. Um, it's a group of six, not me looking. I was like, oh, a group of how many? Fucking six of girls. What do you think, Asia? Yes, a group of six. <laughs> and they are all thieves and criminals. And they're all very young, but they act like they're older than they are. They're all like 17, 18, 19, I think. But they act like they're 26. So. I sometimes kept forgetting they were 17. It's very adventurous. They have a mission to do and they have to achieve that thing. Obviously, there's gonna be many hiccups along the way. The main character is Cass Brecker and you, I think you've heard of him. You've heard of him, he's just that guy. If you watch the Netflix TV show and you're like, oh, well, I've watched the TV show. It was Shadow and Bone, it was in Six of Course, but like they were in it. And you're like, oh, I didn't really, like, I already know what happens. No, no, you know nothing. No, no, no. Nothing in the TV show actually happens. So I think they just came up with a whole story just to, like, combine Shadow and Bone and Six of Crows because it, there's no merging. There's no Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom happen at completely different times. So they never meet, actually, but they did in the TV show. Also, if you didn't like Shadow and Bones, this is 10 times better. I didn't really love Shadow and Bones trilogy. It was okay. This is so good. It's found family. I even almost got emotional at one point. You know, if you read, you know. Um, yeah, it's just so... You just see, like, the growth of the characters so much. And it's just... You just care so much. And you get the point of views of all six of them. And you get to know them. Like, you generally know them. You know what they would do. How they would react. What you just know them i mean you've read six of girls i don't even like you probably read it like in 2021 but if you're like me you've owned it since 2021 but never read it this is a good time the next book is 
the only book that I had two books from the same author that had five stars and it's Olivia Blake <laughs> once again how beautiful um yes this is one for my enemy by Olivia Blake once again I told you I love Olivia Blake I love that woman so much and her writing this is completely different from Masters of Death uh completely different I think all of her books are completely different not not two of them are similar it's crazy like she's got range so this is one for my enemy and it's like an urban fantasy Romeo and Juliet retelling and it talked about these two families that were coexisting but they hated each other and they're two witches families it's set in Manhattan and the two families are the Antonova sisters so all women and the father of brothers all men so the dad and his three sons and on the other side the, a mom with her five daughters one thing about Olivia Blake's books you always get art everywhere so one two three four oh no it's more three six seven daughters absolutely incredible i really enjoy this like there are mainly two couples i loved both so much and obviously that's why it's like very much like romeo and juliet because they're opposite families that couldn't stand each other so like they were doing it in secret and all of that look at that oh it's just beautifully written it's some quotes from this book it was just poetry at points i read it at the right time like i this is what i needed when i read it and i loved it so much and last book last but not least because of course it's a five stars it is the ballad of never after by stephanie garber you've seen this book you've seen you know about this book you know about this series you know about the other series so stephanie garber wrote a trilogy the carnival trilogy and then she wrote a Once Upon a Broken Heart trilogy, and that's a spin-off of Carnival. So, if you want to read the Once Upon a Broken Heart series, you don't have to read Carnival, but I think you should. I think it's better if you do, because you get to know these characters better. But The Ballad of Never After is the second book on the Once Upon a Broken Heart series. And it's so good. It's so good. It's an enemies to lovers YA fantasy. Oh my god, so many fantasies! We were saying... Yeah, The Ballad of Never After is a YA um, fantasy fairy tale trilogy. It talks about this girl with pink hair, with pink curly hair, called Evangeline. And she's 17, 18? She's in the wrong place at the wrong time. <laughs> and she meets this guy called Jax. Yes, Jax with an S. It's plural. Him and all his personalities. Um, and he's perfect. I love him so much. <laughs> Extremely morally grey, but I love him anyway. And Jax is the Prince of Hearts. He's a... Uh... See, all of that, you wouldn't know what that means if you haven't read Carvel. So definitely read Carvel first, like the Carvel trilogy. Very strong, invincible man. And he has a purpose. He wants to do something. And he needs her to do that thing. You don't even know what that thing is until like halfway through. In this book, their love story like blooms. The ending of this book was crazy, crazy. It was, there was so much tension and so much bickering and betrayal. There was betrayal. There was, you know, friendships made, a crazy cliffhanger. So plot twists, Jax is, oh my God. So yeah, these were all the books I gave five stars to in the first seven months? No, six months, six in, six in a week of 2024. <laughs> they're heavy, they're heavy. Let me know if you read any of these or let me know your five star books so I can read them. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps a lot. Thank you so much for watching. I love you. Have a great rest of your day. Ciao.